The dog starts eating newspapers and magazines. Well, she's not so happy with the news right now, I don't think. Probably not. She's walking away. Yeah. She didn't eat the whole newspaper, at least. Of course, like a kid. You know, as soon as you pull out the camera, there we go. Happy New Year, right? Yay, yay. Yay, there we go. Woohoo! The faithful dog. <laughs> so, Mary, <laughs> what time of year is it? It is January. Yes. Stop it! A strange January. Well, it's been gray for about two weeks. It's hasn't been it? gray, and we've had this really kind of weird weather pattern. Yeah. It's warm. I mean, yeah. it's warm for January. No wind. It's been just calm. Yep. Calm and frosty. Very frosty. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so today. I thought I found some really interesting pictures and notes about something that had a really big impact on our county, and that was the logging industry in Wisconsin. Well, you know, typically wood is one of the most sustainable crops that we have as part of it. Trees are part of agriculture. But when yes. we first moved in here, you know, this is a crop that you can only harvest once every 50, 60, 70, or 80 yeah. years. It's a long-term crop. Right. But uh, it's interesting because Trempeau County did not have the big trees. I mean, no, it was not log. We were pretty prairie -ish. Yes, Yes, we were. But... The next county to the east, good old Jackson. Jackson. Well, they've got the perfect soil for it. And they, the whole east side there pretty much had a big logging industry for quite a while. Yep, and the trains ran back and forth yep. with the men. Yeah, they did. It was a big deal. And uh, so I thought we'd talk about logging today. And uh, Mary, you don't have your satka on. No, no, I left it in the car. <laughs> I left it in the car because uh, it's warm. Well, what would your grandma say? I, that I'd get a sick head. A sick head, right. I would get a sick head. <laughs> Cover those ears or you're going to get a sick head. And for our people that don't know what a sotka is, maybe you better explain. It's a Polish scarf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I think you put over your head to protect your ears. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, we don't want sick ears or sick head. That's right. All right. That's right. We got to wash our hands and stay healthy. So I think maybe what we'll do is we'll go inside and uh, we'll do this from inside. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. Okay. As well. Okay. Yay. <laughs> so we moved inside because it's a little chilly. It's nice and warm in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to continue uh, our talk about logging and it was so important to the economy of the state and the county. Um, you know, like we said, Trumbull County didn't have the big timber. It, that Right. Right. But Jackson County did. Yeah, over on the east side. Yes, that's, I mean, really, when the glaciers receded, the trees are what filled in. Yeah. So, but the big impact um, uh, economically was that so many men and boys from the county would go up to the lumber camps in the winter. Yeah, to the north. Yep. To and, the north and east. And they would make money and then they'd come back. And then I think there were probably a lot of farms in this county that were paid for. By log money. By the log money. If Unfortunately, they said some of these young guys, sometimes they'd come out of the woods in the spring and they'd go on a real or, bender. <laughs> Well, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, I mean, in the day, <laughs> I can you know, dangerous, yep. hard work. Very. You know, we're not very. talking John's Roods and McCullough's and no. Steel's. <laughs> no, we're, we're talking not. horsepower, literal horsepower. That's right. Big horses, guys living in Ramble Shack Ox camps. Them. Yes. Ox. And it was a very, very dangerous occupation. And it still is. Yes. Yes. It still is. But the big log boom in the state, that was from 1860 until 1910. Okay. And uh, that was pretty, pretty big, you know, quite a length of time. So um, what got me interested in, on this logging thing was, I think it was back in November or October, my friend Sasha Anderson and I, we decided we're just going to take a road trip one day. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we went to City Point. <laughs> yeah, I got a text that day that Nancy was on a road trip. Yeah, we went, to, we went to 
the city point and pray. And you've been there. I have. Yes. I have. And uh, it's pretty interesting because they're really two little villages. And the reason that they were there in the first place was due to the logging. Right. And now there aren't many people living there. No, no. They're, uh, it's pretty quiet and kind of sad because you know that there's a, a tremendous history. Yeah, it is. It's really behind, behind what's still there. So I think this spring, before the mosquitoes start, you and I are going to have to take a road trip over there. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but So then I got this book, and it was written by a guy from Jackson County called Ralph Eiswine, and it was about logging in Jackson County, okay. in particular uh, down in the southeast corner. Okay. Uh, kind of near where Warren's is? Yes. Okay. And at the time, it was very swampy, but there was good timber down there. And they figured out how to get the lumber out of there. And there had actually been several little towns down there uh, built around sawmills. And when the whole thing, you know, when they ran out of trees, the towns just disappeared. There's right. not any towns there now. No, no. But that was such an interesting book, so I started looking into it. And... Um, like I said, this was a big deal. 1889, here's this clip from the paper about the boys um, coming out of the woods in the, in the spring. And I'm sure they were ready to rumble. <laughs> well, it looks like this came out of the maybe a Blair press, or it's announcing yeah. Blair. Oh, yeah, but uh, uh, hopefully most of the, like the married guys or whatever, came home with most of their money. Yes. But they said some of these other guys, some of the wilder ones, They'd spend it all, everything they'd made all winter in a couple of wild weekends. Wow. <laughs> so, watch, watch out town. Really? Right? <laughs> so that was a big deal. Um, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> so I read this other book, and uh, this was by Jerry Ops, and people that watch uh, public radio yes. and, and television know Jerry Ops. Yes. He's a good author. I think he's from Russ County. Yes, he Rose. does a very, very yep. good job. And he wrote this really interesting book called When the White Pine Was King, and that's about lumbering in Wisconsin. And I did get a bunch of wonderful pictures out of there, and uh, it, it was just, it, you know, I, I encourage people to get it and read it because it was it was well written, it was fun, never boring. And, well, and uh, it's, a good, it's a good time of the year to get a book. Yeah, to think about, you know, the logs and the logging. Um, so what he started out with was talking about how did you establish a log camp. Okay. And first of all, there were these people called cruisers. Okay. And what they would do is they would go out and they would find good tracks of, of trees. trees. And what it was, what they were logging for were white pine. Well, yeah, white pine is, it's nice. And this virgin white pine, they were big trees. Well, huge. Yes, they huge. were. <laughs> And uh, they really didn't do a lot of hardwood logging, but it was mainly the pine. So the cruisers would go, and they would find an area with a lot of trees, and then they would, uh, they were almost like a surveyor, but they would find the spot, and so you could set up the, uh, the camp. They would evaluate the trees and, and the everything. And um, this is a picture, I love this. This is downtown Black River Falls. You see what they're driving oh, down yeah. the middle of the street? Yeah, they're driving sheep. I... Not, I think they're pigs. They are? Yeah, they're pigs. Holy, <laughs> were they running them out to the camp for dinner? They could have been. They could <laughs> well, with have been. Well, with that population of, of men working that hard, you yeah. got to oh, eat. Gosh, I guess they had in, incredible appetites. But I just think that's, you know, here's Black River with a, with a mud street and a bunch of pigs <laughs> going down it. <laughs> So anyway, these, these cruisers would go out and they'd find a site for log camps. And uh, so then they had crews that would come and they would build these camp, you know, the buildings. And it was pretty simple. They usually had a big, long bunkhouse. Yep. And they said it was about, oh, 24 by 36. Okay, so pretty tight accommodations. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't palatial at all. They were just wooden bunks. And the guys usually had straw for, you know, to lay on and everything. But they were outside most of the time. And I wonder, you think they slept in their clothes or their long johns? <laughs> I bet it smelled really Oof. interesting in there. <laughs> the bunkhouse. And then sometimes the, uh, 
the cook shanty would be separate or it would be just part of the bunkhouse. But that, like you said, that was huge importance because yep. they had, you know, talk about eating like a lumberjack. Right, right. They, they had big appetites. So that cook was a really important person. And here this shows, this is a good picture of an interior where, so you can see that they just had these crude bunks. Yeah. And what's hanging up here? All their wool socks that had to dry during the day. Oh, you! I would assume that was probably one of the most important things was <laughs> to keep right. those feet dry. That's right. So you can imagine what it smelled like in there. Oh, right? goodness. <laughs> it must have been really interesting. Uh, well, because you can see the one guy is smoking as well. So you got somebody smoking and you've got... And they don't look like they're the cleanest. So I can't well, imagine that hygiene... In the dead of winter with no running water. I don't imagine they came in at night and took a shower, right? <laughs> so, no five-star hotel no, here. it wasn't. You know, I've got sons. <laughs> and, you know, when they work hard, they're pretty aromatic. Well, yeah. You know? Yeah. And this would have I'm had to sure have been a challenge. Was. And they didn't have those Febreze wave sticks either. <laughs> I don't think it was an issue. No. <laughs> they probably just got used to it. I'm sure they did. <laughs> so, because their days outside in the woods, would they'd work like 12-hour days. Oh, I'm sure. 10 to 12-hour days. And uh, they got paid, a, a, it said, a dollar and a quarter a day. Wow. Yeah. A dollar. And can you imagine a dollar and a quarter a day for that hard physical labor? Yeah. And that wasn't prime wages really because there were other places you could go and do something else and make a little bit more but still i mean this was money's, cash money's money yep. and a lot of these people they just didn't have any cash and and this was the way to make some money to help finance if they were farming or whatever you know well and in the winter time most farms the cows were dry yeah you know or it was a simpler time the wife could take care of them exactly yeah so the men would be in the woods. And uh, the, during the day, of course, they'd be cutting these big trees. And, and they were really big. These trees were huge. You yeah, probably, they had to hand saw them, didn't they? Have you ever cut down a tree by hand? Yes. With an axe? Once with an axe and once with one of those where you got to have a guy on each side. Oh, the cross-cut saw. The cross-cut? Yep. yep. Yeah. That... Uh, the John's Rudd or the or the steel works much much faster and does a much better well, job. Well, yeah, I would I would think uh, you know cross cut saws. That's a that's pretty tough work. It is. And it is, and it, those are done on the huge huge yeah, trees. Look how big these trees were, and and so it took a while, and yeah. you had to be careful. You had to know where to drop the tree yes you didn't want it kicking back on you or anything or hitting the next crew that's working right, on another tree right so this is one thing that was really important and uh they used uh horses or oxen to move these these big uh you know these big Trees. loads of logs look how big they were they were, they were huge you now know that one's on a rail track yes it is and that was kind of um uh, that was at first they just mainly were out in the woods there and they had to use oxen or horses to get the trees out. right right and then later on they were able to put in these they were pretty much temporary tracks right. although there was a railroad that went by prey and city point and then over to wisconsin rapids i think to get the logs to right. the river uh yeah or to the sawmills you're, okay. you're right exactly um so we were looking at these pictures. I was trying to find the one of the, uh, here's the cook shanty. So that was the guy, uh, the cook, he was a pretty important guy. I bet you he was busy all day long. Yes, I'm sure. Because look at the size, you know, here's this big coffee pot here. And uh, so the men, you know, in the morning they'd have a big breakfast and then they'd go out to the woods and they'd send food with them and then they'd come back in at night. And, and have a dinner. And I'm sure that, you know, you've heard people talk about eating like a lumberjack. Well, there you they go. did. They, There's a lot of dishes on that table. You bet. And you had to keep these guys well fed and happy. Well, you know, a full belly is a good thing. Can you imagine uh, if you're outside working physically hard all day in cold weather? You probably did have a good appetite. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and they probably weren't worried about gluten allergies yes. or. <laughs> 
<laughs> or special. I'm, or I'm not going to eat that because I don't like it. <laughs> I'm a vegan. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a vegetarian. No meat, right. please. I just bet that was not an issue back then <laughs> for some reason. Well, and there's got to be 20 people at that table, Nancy. Well, I would say. And, and uh, <laughs> so how many chickens would it take to feed that mob? Well, yeah, that's, and there were quite a few, you know, they get quite a few people in these camps. Yeah. And they said that the loggers didn't want to walk more than two miles to get to where they were cutting the, the trees every day. That would be a hike and a half yeah. every morning to get to work so in when the winter they had time. kind of have done a perimeter like that, then they would move the camps. Okay. So they were constantly being moved more or less. Now, did they log during the summertime as well, or was most of the logging a winter activity? Originally, that's a really good point. Originally, it was in the winter. Because that was when they could uh, skid the logs on the snow. Oh, okay, the yeah. ice ice effect. Right. But then as time went by and things got more modern and they put out more train tracks, then they could in the summer, although mosquitoes were a problem. Oh, because mosquitoes carried illness. Yes, they were. And, and uh, But originally that was why they went in the winter, was so they could use the snow and the ice to uh, to move the logs. And you can see this is a interesting group here with their log shanties and everything and uh, they weren't really dressed for fashion. It doesn't look like any of them have on jackets and maybe that was just a pose for the picture. Well they're tough. They're lumberjacks. Well they've got on their long johns. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Their wool long johns and their wool socks. So they were prepared. So in the woods during the day they would cut down these trees and then uh, there would be these guys that would come along and uh, they would help move the logs out to, they would have a track kind of cut through the woods there where they could load them onto a bobsled. And that, that must have been uh, real interesting, trying to get these big logs up on the, uh, up on the on, sled. On the sleds, yeah, somebody else. Would, yeah, look at the size of these. Well, do you wonder, <laughs> I wonder how they did that. Almost, would they have to use like a cabling of some form? They, because that's yeah. a, I mean, they're, they're, how tall is a horse that size? How yeah. many hands? Well, about 16, 17, that's four inches per hand. Yeah. Okay, four inches. So times that up. Yeah. I mean, look at how high up they are. And I know, I that know. log at the top is huge. I wouldn't want to be riding on one of those. Or I don't think I'd want to be walking next to them either. I wouldn't want to be standing on top. No, I, and I don't really know how they got them up there. The book didn't really talk about that, but I can sure imagine that it wasn't easy. You know, it was one of those things that was... Um, a challenge. A, a real challenge, yeah. Block and cable, maybe? Block and tackle? Could be. I, I'm sure these guys, you know, were probably people that were just good at loading up yeah. those things and a lot of people if they had a good team of horses or oxen they would take it with them to these camps they'd get extra money for that oh okay yeah. that makes sense yeah so what they would do is they would get these loaded on these bobsleds and then they would haul it originally they would haul them to a river okay and, and then they, load would, them? they would unload them on the banks and wait till spring when the floods came. Right, when the water, when the ice went off and then, you know, the water came up and everything. So they could float them down to the sawmills. That, that was what they originally did. Um, and like we said, there was the cook and his helper. And there was usually a clerk in camp that kept the timesheets and did, you know, the office work and stuff like that. And then there was Filer, and, and he was real important because he had to keep everything sharp. Oh, I bet that yeah. would be a full-time job or a night job yeah. while everybody's sleeping. He would be sharpening and getting ready maybe for the next day. Or he even had maybe gone out because they had to have sharp axes and All saws the time. and everything he had to be. So he was important. Have you ever seen those big sharpening stones? Yes. The big jumbo ones? Yeah. I wonder if they must have had a whole, a whole cadre of of those you would, things. You would think they would have one there. Yeah. Just, just do it with a file. Right. Yeah. It would take all day. So they had to keep a sharp edge and then of course because they had the oxen and the horses they would have to have a blacksmith to take care of their feet. Yeah. They usually had to have shoes that had spikes on them so they had grip. So they had grip. Well moving that skid yeah. with that amount of weight on top of it you're gonna have to have grip. Yep. They did. So he was important and also when tools would break he would be able to fix them. Oh. Yeah. Important guy. Yeah. Um, 
You hope he got extra pay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, there were the Teamsters that, that drove the horses and the oxen. And then there were Swampers. Swampers? Yep. What's a swamper? a swamper? That's an interesting title for a job <laughs> opportunity. Yeah, he was a swamper. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> these were the guys that when the trees went down, they would cut off the branches and okay. make it, you know, dress it into a good-sized log. And uh, they would also try to clear a path through the brush so they could skid that log out to where the bobsleds were. Okay. So that was the big things that the swampers did. And, uh, and then there were log scalers. Those were guys that went along and they would measure the logs and, and note the quality and everything. Okay. But some of those logs were huge, that big white pine. So this was pine. a very, very busy place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Incredibly busy. Like a small city almost. It was. And, and like we said that these camps, they moved like every, uh, they had to move them quite a bit. Because they didn't want to have to go out more than two miles. Well, you know, and being out in the woods like that, they had to bring the feed in for the animals too, didn't they? Well, that's it. That's another thing. Besides bringing in all these, uh, you know, the stores for the men and stuff for them to eat, they had to have stuff for those teams as well. So this is this is a pretty good shot here out in the wow. out in the woods over there in Jackson County, and there's teams of horses, and you can see there's more trees behind them. There's what at least. Three or four horses in that picture? Yeah, there's a couple of teams there, and there's also oxen right in the middle, if you look. Oh, between. yeah, there you yep. go. He looks like a Holstein. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yeah, a couple of Holsteins out there. <laughs> so that was the log scalers. And then, of course, there were the lumberjacks, the guys that cut the trees down. So uh, very divisional. Everyone yep. had their task. Oh, yeah, very much. Um, and, yeah, they were organized, you well, know. Well, you had to be a specialist. And because the, each one of those things, each one of those titles are very, even the cook. You, speaking of the cook, oh, here's the menu. Good tie-in. In the breakfast, they would have oh. cornmeal, and looks like they had a lot of, um, oh, well, they had apple butter and codfish cakes. This is breakfast. Cream Cod, potatoes. Cream <laughs> potatoes. Well, that's a hearty breakfast. And apparently, if you had a gluten allergy, you were in tough shape. Oh, yeah, I mean, they had a lot of carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> and then for dinner, again, you know, they're trying to fill people up with the roast beef and gravy. Mashed potatoes. Yeah. And remember back then that your big meal was usually at noon. Yes. Yeah. So I suppose when they came in at night, they maybe had stuff that was left over from dinner, if, if there was any <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> Well, every dinner should end with stewed prunes and molasses cookies. Yeah, and uh, nut butter and baked beans. I guess they ate a lot of beans. Beans and potato salad. Yep. <laughs> That's like a 4th of July dinner for supper every night. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> you think they'd get sick of that, you know? Probably. <laughs> but like I said, they probably had... I bet they weren't picky eaters. No. I just no. have that feeling that they probably weren't. So... These were all the, the various, you know, guys and with their jobs and everything. Oh, that looks like musicians. Yeah, there's a guy with a fiddle and a guy with an accordion. And uh, I'm sure they were popular because they didn't have a radio or television or... No. The they didn't have video were, games at night. So. They didn't have women. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what did they do? And that really, they didn't... The lumber camps were all male. So once in a while there would be a cook that was a, a woman, but yeah, otherwise it was male. I just love these pictures of these two guys out there, these two lumberjacks out there. In, Look at uh, the size of that saw. Yeah, uh -huh. yep. They're just, I just love this picture. <laughs> I think this is great. But <laughs> They worked hard. And a lot of them were Scandinavian. The Scandinavians were noted for being good in the woods, I suppose. Right, they, right. Maybe they'd had some... Uh, you know, they had some work experience coming from where they did. Before know, they came over, right. they handled trees. Right. Now, these guys are... Um, what was that? That's a hook. That's yes. a cant, right? Um, it's like a cant hook, yes. And that was kind of a, a basic tool that they had, you know, to do to move the... We have a You have a cant hook? Yeah. Well, good. You yeah, we burn wood in the, in the, and to heat the house. And you cant hook. You ought to... Bring it with you when you go to town. I should have brought it today. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, you're kind of candle. Yes, yes. And it's very, very handy. I can move big, big sticks. We call them sticks, the big log sections that yeah. we cut up because we get cold ties. And uh, I can even move big logs with them. Now this guy, I love this picture. Oh, this is a nice pose. His picture was taken over in Black River Falls. And the thing that he's got is called a peavy. And that's mm. like a cant hook with another, with a spike on it. Okay. Because he was, and this, these are the rock stars of the lumber camp, were the log drivers. Oh. These were the guys that when in the spring, when the ice went out of the rivers and the you know, snow melted and a lot of water, and they would put all those logs into the river to float them down to the sawmills. Okay. These guys would go out there and they would they would be walking and jumping around on these logs as they went down the river. These are the guys that would get crushed or drowned. Well, yeah, they if wore, they didn't, they had to know what they were doing, and they their shoes they had big spikes on their shoes. And that's where that log rolling. Yes. There's contests right. that everybody's right. seen. Up in Hayward, they do the log rolling right. contests, and I've watched that, and I think it should be an Olympic sport. And the, the spikes that they had on their shoes, they every night they would sharpen them because you're jumping from log to log. On flooded rivers right. with rushing water and ways you could get crushed. Well, what they were doing is they had to try to keep the logs moving. moving. Yes, because this is what would happen if they didn't. This is a giant log jam. Wow. It's, it was like a 16-mile <laughs> log jam. I think it was in the Chippewa River. And you can see, here's the guys down here on the bottom. And right. look at how tiny they are. Yeah, this was massive. And it was, they had to be able to, they were, the log drivers tried to keep the logs rolling and not getting, you know, jammed up. Jammed up. So, um, because this is what would happen. They must have gotten has pay, huh? Boy, you would hope so. <laughs> I said they were the they were the rock stars. Yeah, they had to be. Yep, they were tough. And there there was even a song about uh, the log drivers waltz talking about how because they were so light on their feet from jumping log to log that the women thought they were good dancers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense. But it was dangerous. And they usually were wet pretty much all day. Yeah. And it was very dangerous because if you fell in, you could drown. You could get hit by one of those logs. It was it was very and I'm, dangerous. And I'm sure the medical care at that time to deal with crush type injuries probably wasn't the best. And they couldn't just call nine one one. No. No. I don't think they had a doctor going along with them when they went down these rivers either. But that was. Really, you really had to know, know what you were doing if you were going to be a log driver. Well, as time went on, uh, they finally started putting in, um, they finally figured out what they should do was they would put in, have sawmills near where they were logging, and they would cut these trees into like big planks. Okay. And they would make big rafts that they kind of tied together, and then they would float these big rafts. Full of, of lumber down to the sawmills, and a lot of them were down in Eau Claire or um, La Crosse, Alaska. In the where did oh from, from I would up assume, in the woods, yeah. In Jackson County, I would assume all that lumber somehow made it over towards Wausau through Wisconsin, or did no. it? Did they float down the Black River? It went down the Black River. It went down the Black. Yep, yeah, the Black River was a big. Conduit. Then down to La Crosse. Right. Yeah. That's where the lumber baron homes come in. That's right. In some of these cities. Exactly. And there are mansions. If you ever drive along by the university in Eau Claire, beautiful, beautiful homes because the logs were money. And the same thing in La Crosse and Winona. Oh, and a few years back they had a, a log flume that had been forgotten about and Eau Claire collapsed. Really? Yes, in the, down, in the downtown area. Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> It opened up, you know, probably a space about the size of your kitchen here. Was it overhead? Well, it was underground. It was underground. Oh, my gosh. And what had happened, it, it sounded like it had been either log jammed up or whatever, and he, they eventually just filled over the top of it. Ah. And then there was a flood event that w eroded enough of that side bank yeah. where it opened it up. 
Well, and like I say, for a while they were rafting these big rafts of, of you know, uh, trees that were just cut so when they were big boards and they took them down the sawmill where they could dress them some more. And there was a huge demand for lumber back then because oh, this is the United yeah. States was growing. We were building. They weren't building with uh, plastics or anything. No. Or aluminum. <laughs> there was a huge demand for Free lumber. Free steel frame homes. That's right. Huge demand. And But they did finally get more. Um, they never really totally got away from the rivers, but they got more um, train tracks laid down. Right. They used to, they still sometimes call Eau Claire Sawdust City. Well, Sawdust City Days. Yep. That's their town celebration. They had, at one time, Eau Claire had nine sawmills. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, and like we said, Prey and, and City Point, they had a train line that went by them. They actually did. But down in that southeast corner of Jackson County, uh, like the town of Knapp, down in there by Warrens, yep. there was lumber, but it was really swampy. And so it was hard to get at. Some guy finally figured it out. He put out these little temporary uh, train tracks. Oh. And I guess if you go out there now, uh, a certain time of year, you can still see the raised area. But they would have all, they'd set up all these different sawmills. And uh, they would, they'd be, you know, prosperous little towns there for a while. There'd be all kinds of, there'd be hotels and, well, and people as, living out there. As long as there was resources enough to generate employment, just exactly. like really any city. Yeah. And then once that resource was gone, they had to move on. So there, this is like taking the frosting off the top of the cake. Yeah, these sawmills were, were big deals and um, these logging camps. By and, and not just the logging camp, but the sawmill cities as well. Right. There was one, there was quite a few over there, uh, probably north of Warrens, out in the swampy area. And uh, one was called McKenna. It had about 400 people. Wow. But now if you went out there, they're totally gone. There's nothing left. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> lost, lost history. Well, once the sawmill quit and moved somewhere else, there wasn't anything else to do out there. They're pretty much sitting out in the swamp. <laughs> well, and it, you know, it took time because people tried to farm that land yep. after the trees were gone, and that kind of was a serial nightmare. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we figured out cranberries. Yep, it did finally evolve into something else. And what happened when these sawmills would close and there were all these houses and buildings, which were all made out of wood, they would sell them and people would come by and they would either tear them down or they would move them. Okay. And I had read there were several houses right over there in Taylor that uh, the lumber had been purchased from one of these sawmill cities and moved okay. over there to build the house. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, they were very efficient at reusing the resource. Nothing went to waste. No, no nothing. We know. So that was uh, these big sawmill cities. And uh, it was just a really, uh, working in the sawmills was dangerous too. Well, they... There wasn't any OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> they had big saws with big teeth. Big blades. And if you've ever even watched even today's current band saws, Ugh. you know, it is dangerous. Well, plus, you know... Um, what sawmills produced a lot of besides lumber was sawdust. Yes. And so what did they do with it? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, they would put it on their streets. They would put it down like in their sidewalks. They would dump it in holes. They would dump it in swamps. So kind of use it for like a fill or something. But what happened was if it got dry, you know, if the weather was dry, it was an enormous fire hazard. Oh, I bet. Yeah, because this stuff could smolder and it could catch on fire. Well, any kind of plant material that, I mean, hay burns. Sure. You hear about people sure. having hay barn fires and pole shed fires because they put their hay up a little bit too wet. And so you get a big pile of sawdust that's going to heat all yep. on its own. It's going to take right. on a life of its own. And what were towns made of back then? Wood. Wood. <laughs> <laughs> so there were lots of fires. Yeah, you had to be careful with your matches. You did. And uh, we always think about the big Chicago fire in 1871. Yeah, they blame it on the cow. Yeah, they blamed it on the cow. But that very same day, and it had been a very dry summer. Okay. Uh, Peshtigo, 
Yes. Peshtigal had a terrible fire. It was much worse than the one in Chicago. Something like 1,500 people were killed. Right. And it was dry, and it had been logged up there, so there was sawdust, there was residue from the trees, you know, branches and stuff. Dry, kindling. Tinder, yes. Yep. And they said it was like a nuclear uh, holocaust. The fire was so huge and so hot, and it was a, a crown fire. Yep. And uh, a lot of people died. You know, there was a, a lake or a river at Peshtigal, and people got in there to try to save themselves. But lots of times they were killed because... Uh, all the oxygen was being sucked out of the air. By the wind. And people died uh, just from, uh, like, asphyxiation. Uh, <laughs> it was terrible. Horrible. Oh, it was oh, horrible. Man. So many people died. It just burned to crisp that they are, they just had to make a big common grave in Peshtigal. That's so sad. It is. It was just, it was horrendous. But that was part of the things that happened when you were logging out there and then you brought the, you know, the trees in, turned them into planks. Yep. But then you had sawdust. Yep, right for the conditions. Yep. And we, you know, we saw a lot of tragedy with fire last year in twenty sure. yeah. in twenty twenty. Oh, yeah. In the in the year before, terrible, terrible fires. Dry years. And now because of all the science we have, we can watch these things and study them. But the bigger the fire is, it takes on a life all of its own. It creates right. its own wind. Right, right. It it's it's just amazing. Yeah. And to, it's not something you can run out there and throw a bucket of water. On. No. Do you know how many thousand acres burned with that Peshtigal fire? I think it was like a hundred thousand. It was something. a lot. It was huge. Yeah, it was. And this this was a major problem when when the logging was. Uh, because there was the residue out there. Not just, you know, the sawdust at the sawmills, but out there where they actually did the logging. Yeah. So there were, you had to be really careful, especially if it was dry. Well, and they probably <laughs> didn't have rural fire departments either. No, you didn't get on the phone and, you know, you couldn't call people to come and, and put it out. No, thank you to our local firefighters. You bet. There we go. You bet. We're lucky to have you. Now, it's interesting. I found some interesting facts here about um, 1897. Uh, this was kind of like the, the northern part of uh, Wisconsin was where the big logging went on. Yes. And the Jackson County, and, yeah, up in the big timber. And what was the land use in these counties? Well, 24% of northern Wisconsin and that 24% of that land was settlers. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, the government still owned about 5%. And the Native Americans, they had about 2%. That's, uh, yeah, yeah we had, that's a whole other history of know. And who owned 63%? The logging companies. Oh, the companies. Oh, they owned a lot of land. <laughs> Got to have vertical integration, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, huge. but the land at the time was cheap. They did. They bought it cheap. And uh, the logging had really started out in Maine and just kind of worked its way west because when they were done logging Wisconsin, they just kept going west. Right. So it was really a boom and bust thing. Yeah, and then they kind of ran out of trees on the other side of the Mississippi River. Yeah. Until yeah. they, I mean, they had to, they, the forest resources were on the east side of the river. It was, it was pretty tough. Um, Until you get into the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, with the plains. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, and like I said, we didn't have the lumber here or the big trees in Trumple County. But we do now. Uh, probably not as big as some of these. Oh, no, that when no, we look at the no, because <laughs> our trees are only in the 80 to 100 year old range. Right. You know, they're pretty young trees. And nowadays, you know, modern logging is mainly for pulp. Yes. Or it is for uh, railroad ties, yeah. which is oak. And during the logging boom, they were mainly after the pine. Right. But when they had chopped down most of the pine, then they started taking the oak as well. But originally that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the poor Native Americans, you know, here they are. They were living here and they were subsisting or doing all right. Yeah. And these guys come in and say, well, we're going to cut everything down here. Sorry. Yeah. And we're taking it all away. Yep. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, that's a tragedy in itself. It wasn't very a very good thing. So that's really why Prey and City Point are out there. And I think there's a couple of cranberry bogs out there now. Yes, yes. Not big towns. They have um, 
trails out there for uh, snowmobiling and RV and that kind of yep. helps the uh, outdoor recreation the economy and uh, but that was part of that got logged off Jackson County and there were so many men in this county that went up there and worked as lumberjacks I had posted some pictures on Facebook talking about it and I had quite a few people uh, reply say yeah you know my grandpa's brother was killed up there or somebody else was hurt it was very dangerous you can imagine because well, it's dangerous now well yeah and granted the technologies are supposed to be better and faster but that doesn't take away the danger factor no it certainly doesn't so we'll just I think we'll we'll uh, kind of wrap this up and we'll start and do a, a second part about the logging but like I said, it was between mainly in Wisconsin between 1816 and 1910, and paid for I'm sure a lot of farms and a lot of businesses oh, in this bet. county. Sometimes you got to have multiple jobs. Yeah, yeah, to keep to keep it going. And just for anyone watching who would like to take a drive, um, they re recently redid Highway 54. Yes, and 54 runs from Black River out to City Point and, and Prey in that neighborhood. Right. And it's a very, very nice road. It's a nice drive. Um, flat. Flat. <laughs> we don't have a lot of snow and ice. So if you want to take a drive, go there check you it out. go. <laughs> and just to sum up again, there were the lumberjacks and the swampers. The swampers. Yep. The all important cook. And uh, I don't imagine they had anybody there that did laundry. Probably not the way the clothes were hanging in the bunkhouse. I just, I just can imagine. I, I can just imagine how that whole thing goes. Yeah, they they come in at night and, and they're wet, so you know from being out there, they take wet off wool. those wet wool socks and let them dry for the next day. Wet wool, wet wool pants, wet wool socks. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I Interesting times. I'm sure it was. So we are thank you for listening to our part one of the logging. Okay. And uh, when we get done here, Mary's going to go home and sharpen up her cross-cut saw. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to get someone on the other side there. You're going to get Bruce out there. <laughs> well, first we've got to dig through the, through the coffee can that has all the saw files in it to find the go. right file because there's <laughs> different files for different saws and different chains. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, so we're going to say we'll see you later on History, History Files. Files.